I am presenting about Hatsune Miku. Uh, this is Hatsune Miku. Uh, basically, that means the first voice or sound of the future. Uh, that's what her name means in Japanese. All right, so um, about Miku and who even is she? Well, she's a vocaloid or a computer program, a voice synthesizer used to create music. So uh, her whole character is basically a computer program. Um, and her, the idea to develop this program was uh, initially started in 2000, uh, March of 2000, uh, but then later on, Krypton Future Media uh, decided to distribute this to the public uh, in 2007, August 31st. Uh, so you can actually get your own copy of the Hatsune Miku uh, computer voice synthesizer program for just a cheap price of $168. All righty. Now, uh, she is called an anthropomorphic, which basically <coughs> is personification of a computer, uh, basically calling a computer a character and giving them a uh, personality. Uh, and the public generally views her as an anime character or a character from a anime or a TV show. Uh, she's actually not, but she's so famous that she's made several appearances in anime shows like Lucky Star and uh, etc. cetera. Um, all right, now why did I choose Miku? That is a great question. Uh, I have listened to Vocaloid music, um, this whole genre of music since I was in middle school, and I just really wanted to know more about Miku since a lot of her uh, background and her roots can be kind of confusing at first, especially if you're just going in head first. Um, and I also want to share my passion with all of you, and hopefully you'll learn something new today. Um, so. Uh, more about Miku, uh, she is created to this figure, uh, this uh, kind of physical appearance is created to market her computer program uh, to get more people to buy it. Um, and uh, she is canonly 16 years old and voiced by uh, the Japanese voice actress of Saki, Fuj uh, Saki uh, Fujita. Um, and her character code name is CV01, uh, which it's hard to see on here, but there is a 01 on her uh, shoulder right there. Uh, CV01 stands for, uh, stands for Character Voice 01. So she is the first Vocaloid in a series of Vocaloid characters uh, that were CV02, CV03, etc. Um, all right. Oh, and also she performs in concerts uh, live and they're often sold out. Uh, but her origin story and what makes her special, um, she does not have an origin story. She kind of is just produced to advertise a computer program. However, uh, she is a pretty much fan created character. So uh, fans basically write songs and stories to uh, kind of uh, get their imagination of what they want uh, to, what they want Hatsune Miku to be like. So anyone can uh, produce music or uh, write fan fiction, write comic uh, novels, graphic novels, um, or anything like that to uh, broadcast to the world. Like this is my interpretation of Hatsune Miku. I can put her in any storyline I want to. I can betray her however I want to. Usually she's portrayed as like a sassy, typical teenage girl, uh, but um, that is up for personal interpretation. Um, she is, uh, what makes her special is she is the world's first well-known virtual <coughs> idol slash singer. She has many concerts and many events as well. She's very famous and well-known. As you can see, I am wearing the Hatsune Miku wig. Uh, this is the Snow Miku version, so it's a bit lighter blue than her actual original character design. Uh, but I've been recognized in the halls many times today by students. It's like, hey, is that Hatsune Miku? Yes, it is. Alrighty. Now, what about antagonist and nemesis? Uh, well, she does not have any antagonist or a nemesis. However, there are other Vocaloid characters that were produced after her or produced around the same time as her. Um, they have different voice banks, so all of their computer programs can be purchased separately. Uh, and you can basically uh, code or um, adjust the voice banks as you want to create music or make her talk and the characters. 
uh, to communicate what you want them to communicate. Uh, there are other companies other than Krypton Future Media uh, who sell uh, Vocaloid-like programs, but we can't call them Vocaloids because that's copyrighted, so we'll just call them Utaos. Uh, they're essentially the same thing, but just a different program that does the same thing. Um, so I'm about to go through some <coughs> other well-known Vocaloids that were released in the same company as her, uh, basically to just kind of give you an overall view of that. So this is Kalkameen, Lean, and Len. They are twins, and they are often written in songs together as like sibling fighting, or um, there's a song that's like, they're trying to uh, basically get back at each other, uh, etc. You know, the typical sibling uh, trope. This is Keito. He is uh, another Vocaloid. He's often portrayed as Hatsune Miku's love interest and vice versa, but there's nothing canon about that. It's just fan created, so take that as you will. Uh, there are many love songs with them together, as well as like heartbreak songs. And um, just to give you a gist of how chaotic this whole community is, and really you can produce anything you want, uh, there is a song where um, he is the main singer and he sings about every day I come home and my wife, Kasume Miku, pretends to be dead. And it's a creative version, it's a creative way for them to like express, uh, like show communication to each other. I know it's a little weird, but hey, get on with it. Uh, this is uh, Neru. Uh, she is a um, she is not a technical vo uh, vocaloid, but uh, she does have a voice bank, and she's kind of well known, uh, but mostly modeled after Hatsune Miku. You can see she is literally Hatsune Miku, except yellow hair and one pigtail. Uh, this is Teto. Uh, she does not have a voice bank and is not a vocaloid, but they were produced. Along the, same, uh, along the same time as Hasume Miku. So they're written in songs together. Uh, there is a very well-known song named Triple Baka, and it's just the three of them having a good time. All right, this is Gumi, a less known Vocaloid. Uh, she has a very wide range of vocals and it can be used in many different ways. And then I'll just go through the rest of these. This is uh, Megrin Lu uh, Luka, uh, this is uh, Mako, and this is IA, and there are hundreds more of Vocaloid characters. All right, now this is kind of a collage I made of Miku's outfits slash appearances, the way she's changed over time. Uh-huh. Um, so uh, there are outfits created for pretty much every song that gets popular. There's a music video that's like fully animated and uh, usually in that music video, she has a unique outfit. So. Uh, as you can see, this one is from the music video Senbon Zakura, which means Thousand Cherry Trees, and it is her uh, wearing the Japanese flag uh, as well. And then, um, as you can see over here, this is a Deep Sea Girl uh, from the music video Deep Sea Girl. Uh, this is her original, uh, basically her classic outfit. Um, aside from music, she, is, she also has outfits created by fans for special occasions. So this is uh, the Snow Miku, uh, which I would love to cosplay one day, but I do not have the money right now. One day, one day. All right, mm -hmm. and then this is Santa Miku, just a fan-created uh, portrayal of her being, you know, Christmassy season. This is Halloween Miku, and then over here, this is Sakura Miku, which Sakura is just a uh, very popular Japanese flower. Uh, so she's basically just modeled into pink. And then this is the 15th anniversary uh, Miku, uh, which was also a contest that fans can basically submit their character designs and then through a contest, chosen winner. So that was the 15th anniversary winner. All right. And then um, fun fact for most of the Miku costumes, as well as other Vocaloid uh, outfits, there are figurines, and there are people who collect these figurines. They're very expensive, but they're really high quality, and it's just cool to see how some people have interesting hobbies. Um, these smaller versions of her are called mentoids. Uh, there are these chibi versions, or smaller, uh, tend to be cuter versions of the actual uh, full-size model. Um, and in the figurines, you can take them apart or uh, pose them in different ways as well. All right, perception and impact. 
So Hatsune Miku teaches us a lot about self-expression and freedom to express how you want to express uh, all of your opinions and your imagination. Um, so she has allowed many to share their true feelings or their true inner struggles, um, perhaps in their past or their worries for the future or anything at all because with a program like Hatsune Miku and any Vocaloid, you can create anything you want uh, and nobody is going to judge you for it uh, because it's the internet. And I mean, there are people who judge you, but that's beside the point. Um, so she has created another artistic and creative way to create um, media. Uh, so she has opened up a lot of different hobbies and jobs for people, uh, for designing her outfits, for uh, producing her songs, um, for marketing and advertising all of her um, products, her figurines, everything about that. And MMD is uh, basically this animation um, program uh, style in which you can animate characters like her uh, through a 3D uh, visual. And you will see that in the video I will show you. Um, and then she has also created a safe space for no one is judged, and you can create the songs and the topics. And the songs of these, the topics of these songs are very, very wide <coughs> in genre. There are ones that are very serious about mental health, about uh, struggles. There are also some that are extremely funny and chaotic, and they can sometimes be very confusing, but it's all good and it's all to make you laugh. There are songs about vegetable juice, uh, that, that is actually a song. Um, and then there are also songs that are just, you know, plot songs to, that fans have created to write plots for her and her fellow Vocaloid characters. Alrighty. Um, so, fun facts. I'll just go over these really quickly. You can read them if you want. Uh, but I do want to mention that she has collaborated with Toyota, Google, uh, Pocky, the Japanese chocolate biscuits right there, and she's also uh, collaborated with um, 7-Eleven. So there is a, this video where she's in the Nendroid form, and it's like, 7-Eleven, and then she, it's chaotic, but it's to advertise things, and it's really cool to see that. All right, now, uh, for um, how people view her, she is obviously very, very famous. And she is in about 100,000 songs. Um, and obviously, we don't know all of them. There are probably a lot more than that, but we can't keep track of how many songs that are privately created. Uh, there are about 2,000 well-known songs that many people can say that they've heard in the community. And then there are also plenty of YouTube videos and content out there featuring her. And also, as a fun fact, she was sent to space on the Venus probe. It was a Japanese Venus probe. Uh, and there are three aluminum plates on it that have pictures of her. Uh, so that is cool. Now I have this video I want to show to you guys. Sit tight, it's a bellman. Okay. Thank you, Mirror.